Hey guys, DV here. As promised, this is my Lightworks Beta how-to tutorial video. Hopefully we cover all your questions, but if you have any, feel free to comment. Um, here I'm just selecting the frame rate, which is going to be 24 frames per second. Changing the name of my um, my project to DV Tutorials, which is um, a fitting name, since so this is a beta uh, how-to video. So here you have a bunch of different options on the main menu here. It pops up when you first start a new project, which includes different frame settings, um, formats, audio settings, and information about film. Um, so these are some important things to take a look at when you're first getting started. Now, to get going here, I'm going to open up a new edit or a timeline and select files to import using the tools on the left-hand side. I'm going to select like seven or eight video clips from my T2i from a folder on my hard drive. And um, once you're finished, you can just click um, do it and then you can select which ones you want out of that um, that set and then you uh, select start at the bottom and as you can see it's going to analyze the videos and import them uh, my computer is running a little slow today it was only a core 2 quad but I'm going to try this on the core i5 and see how it works because my opinion lightworks is kind of a system hog but maybe that's just me anyway double click on the uh, on the files you've just imported and then click on the third uh, the third uh, tool down on the right hand side which is labeled pop out title which is going to make a thumbnail size video clip that you can drag around your screen and position um, in your workspace and that's going to allow you to continue editing import to the timeline and do a bunch of different things so basically like I like to get started by simply uh, moving the video clips into a more manageable location especially along the top of the screen which seems to be a convenient spot both to see all the clips and to work with so they're not in the way so if I just drag them around there, minimize the import window, which creates kind of a heading, and then drag my first clip into the edit window, and then which then in turn will place it on the timeline. Extending the timeline a little bit, and um, going ahead and selecting where I'd like to cut the clip, I'm going to go ahead and click delete, and then uh, remove, which then deletes the part of the clip that I don't want. Then I can go ahead and delete the track, which is audio 2, by cl simply right-clicking on a blank spot of the timeline, clicking delete tracks and selecting A2. Then I can go ahead and position the cursor on the timeline where I'd like the second clip and then I can go ahead and drag that into the edit window. And then I can do the same thing with deleting and cutting the clip and then clicking remove. And we're going to go ahead and move that clip up there and then move the edit window over um, to the left hand side so it's an easier location to work with. And then basically what we're going to do is add a transition effect right in the middle by clicking on effects, going to video, mats, and then um, clicking on, or mixes, excuse me, and then clicking on dissolve, which seems to be a good one to try out. So we're going to click that, click um, from here, and select the duration of 32 frames approximately, that should be okay, and click add. Okay, so we've gone ahead, we've clicked on add, we've added our uh, transition to the timeline, and we're going to go ahead and click join. And then I'm going to try to move it over just a little bit so it's a little more centered. So I'm going to click join again. And then uh, basically, oh, join again. My bad. And then uh, I'm going to move the cursor over to the beginning and play back the clip. And we're going to see how our dissolve transition worked. Um, basically, you can see it's playing along. And then it dissolves into the next clip. So it looks really nice. Now, to get going with another effect here, I'm going to work on the first clip on the timeline and I'm going to do a video correction by doing video color and then color correction which is the first option. I'm going to go ahead and click on 96 to make it a little bit longer duration and I'm going to select um, not from here, let's see, current selection and then click add and what that's going to do is then stretch the effect for that entire video clip on the timeline and so you can change some of the settings over the in the effects box there including choose a color um, for the color correction. You can see it's looking a little bit better. I'm not really trying to do anything specific, just kind of show you how the program works. Um, a lot of this stuff can be done in Vision Lab, but it's useful to have it all in one usable interface um, rather than switching between programs and importing and exporting. So it's not that this is meant to replace Vision Lab, it just does some of the same features. Although Vision Lab obviously is a lot more as is After Effects, but we're getting sidetracked now. I'm going to go to the second clip there, and I'm going to do a uh, color correction on that as well, kind of increase the saturation. It is a green screen clip just randomly, but uh, this is some of the same settings you would use uh, and change for Vision Lab to make a key uh, for chroma key. 
So basically we've got our color correction here. We have our transition. We color corrected the second clip. And um, we got pretty much a basic edit going on right here. So now we're going to take a look at some of the tools we've got here, which include um, Record, which is for capturing video from different devices, including Firewire, HDV uh, camcorders, um, etc. So that's a use useful feature. You've got a lot of different options here for format um, and import options, where you'd like the destination to be for the files, hard drives, video codecs, uh, what have you. Oh, by the way, that brings up a point. There's some video codecs you can download on the Lightworks website for Lightworks to export to. Now this is the import window, which we saw before, which opens up all the folders on your hard drive that you can browse through and select the files you'd like to import. This is actually pretty useful. It's a uh, search through different bins, through your edit windows, etc. for different clips. You can add in some information there. And then this next one is a bin, which is actually pretty cool. I like this a lot. You can drag your clips into there to organize them a little bit better, um, keep them out of the way. I'm sure there's probably another use for it, but that's what I've been using it for so far. This is a rack, which I actually have to say I have honestly no idea what it does. Um, if anybody has any idea, if not, I'll let you know in the next video I do. This is a sync group, which is pretty cool. There's a lot of options you can change. Um, here, I just wanted to cut out and show you this because it was, it's pretty cool what I figured out. I wanted to include it in the video. You can uh, select everything out of your uh, edit windows and on your timeline and add it from the bins into, into this uh, window. And then you can stretch it. You can make bigger um, thumbnails. You can then open it up and play the video clips back. Um, you can organize them, which is called tidy, which is kind of cool. And then you can export them as a uh, little video clip using the pop-out title again, and then you can add it to a timeline. So that's kind of cool. This is also a disk manager. It shows you some of the um, free space on your hard drives, which is useful for figuring out which one you'd like to render to without opening up another window. This is a video analysis window from the toolbar on the right, right or left-hand side, and basically you can analyze a video by just clicking on it, and then it shows you the waveforms and some information about that, which is pretty cool. I mean, there's a lot of pro tools in here. Um, quite a step up from Vegas, I must say. Now, there's also a handy frame calculator as well off to the side where you can plug in some different numbers for frames. Um, and I can definitely see that being useful because sometimes it's hard to use a calculator. you got to do it by hand. I know that's happened to me in the past in Vegas. And uh, I've always wished for something like that. So that's pretty cool. Here's a trimmer thing. I think it's got something to do with the 2K or film uh, media. But it does look pretty cool. I mean, there's like some default paths and um, some information like that. And then, let's see, here we have the playback for tape, which, yeah, I guess that'd be kind of cool. I'm not really sure what it does, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll get back to all this stuff that we don't know about yet. This is the basic introduction. So here's the export and render window, which is obviously very useful. Um, this I'll be using a lot. Um, you can choose your export destination, your video codecs, um, for those of you who are from FX Home, a lot of this interface is going to look similar in a second. Um, oh, here you can select your video codec. Oh, this is the part that's going to look similar to FX Home. Um, the interface is very close, and you can change some of the settings there as well. So then you go ahead and you want to click OK. And then there's some frame rates you can change, um, some codecs that can be exported, um, some information like that. A lot of stuff you can just play around with, uh, progressive deinterlacing, um, and then you can go ahead and click uh, start to export your video. It's going to start rendering. So here's another useful feature, which is creating a new room, which is up at the top in the left-hand corner. And you can select more video clips to import. You can organize them a little bit better. You can open up new timelines in here. It's basically a project within inside a project, which is something After Effects does a lot, which is definitely pretty handy. Um, so here I'm just importing like five different clips. And uh, I'm just going to take a second. That's normal, by the way. Um, at least on my computer. I have yet to try it out on the i5 computer, but I'm going to. And I'll let you know what I think about that. So we're going to use the pop-out tile window again and the tool there, which is the third one down. And I'm going to open up a bin <laughs> and uh, drag them into the bin to organize it a little bit better. And let's not forget, DV Tutorials was the first one to bring you a Lightworks Beta tutorial on YouTube and the Internet. So thanks for watching guys, don't forget to subscribe, and there's more videos coming very soon. Enjoy Lightworks.